But then the old girlfriend, you know, she kind of, she jumped to the rescue. She's like, oh, but Nick is out doing stand-up comedy every night. He tries really hard. And then, like, the dad was pretty impressed by that. But, like, I don't know, I have to be honest, because he was a nice dad. So I had to go, like, hey, uh, I don't get paid anything for it. And, you know, all that. And he goes, oh, well, it could be worse. You could be some drunken alcoholic wandering from bar to bar every night without any purpose in life. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> imagine that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Nick Kappa! Hey guys, did everyone have a good Christmas? <laughs> How good's Christmas, huh? <laughs> so good. My favourite thing about Christmas is eating a Ferrero Rocher. Huh? How good are Ferrero Rochers? <laughs> Ferrero Rocher, more like Ferrero... Oh yeah. <laughs> I still can't believe that gets a laugh. I, I sit down at my desk, I try to write thought-provoking stuff, and Ferrero, oh yeah, gets a laugh. Gets a laugh every time. <laughs> Ferrero, no. <laughs> you guys are kind of laughing with, about the Christmas bit because it's September, it's nine months after Christmas, but I'm filming this now so someone could be watching this at Christmas and go, I don't get it. <laughs> so I shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh man, I don't know how this is gonna go. I've never, I've never filmed anything before. You never know when stand up how things are gonna go. You never know when your career is gonna end or when it's gonna begin. <laughs> Never found out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, sometimes you see the weirdest stuff in stand-up. You just never know how it's going to go. Once I saw a guy and he came out for like eight minutes and just didn't get one laugh for eight minutes. And then he went like this. He goes, that's it. It's this or Woolworths. <laughs> I work at Woolworths. <laughs> and then still nobody laughs. <laughs> and he's like, that's it. I'm gonna end it all. And everyone's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'm back in the game. <laughs> everyone's like, no. <laughs> Anyway, that was a hard gig for me. <laughs> it was me the whole time. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. <laughs> I can do the job. Any fans of pigs? Oh yeah, love pigs, always love pigs. Pigs have the intelligence of a three-year-old child. You can look into a pig's eyes and it knows what you're thinking. How many times have you guys looked into a pig's eyes and it's looked back at you and gone, yeah, Pornhub. <laughs> Everybody, right? I'm in a moral conundrum with pigs because so smart, so beautiful, yet so delicious. <laughs> there was this place in Sydney called the Forest Lodge Hotel and they had the best pork neck ever. And the pork neck was so good that I didn't call it the Forest Lodge Hotel. I called it Pork Palace. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I went there, I'd always sing this song. I'd always go, Pork Palace, hand me my chalice, cause shit goes crazy when I get to Pork Palace. Pork Palace. <laughs> Girlfriend hated it. And she was like, do we have to sing it in the restaurant? And I said, yes, it's Pork Palace. 
Um, this, oh, this is so good. It's so good that the... Oh, oh, it's good you rocked up now, sir. Great. I'm just taping something here. Uh, I put like $3,000 into this. Anyway, it's good. It's good to hear anyway. Anyway, as I was saying about... Anyway, as I was saying about white power... Uh, I think we all got to stick together and uh, no just kidding mate that's that's after the show no this gig's great love it. Uh, it you don't get to do many good gigs when you do stand up uh, so, sometimes you get no you don't sometimes you have to do the worst gigs uh, I got sent an email a couple of months ago and a guy said hey Nick how would you like a job in stand up comedy I said sweet started rubbing my hands together at the hundreds of dollars I could be making <laughs> per year. <laughs> I said, yeah, lay it on me, bro. What's this cool job? And he's like, he says, uh, Nick, it is the best idea ever. How would you like to perform in between strippers? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, man, that is the best idea ever. Picture this, right? You're, a, you're someone at the strippers and there's a nude woman dancing in front of you, you're aroused, you rock hard, and you go, oh, I'll tell you what to make this night better. A laugh. <laughs> no one said that ever. In fact, probably the main reason you're in a strip club is because there's been enough laughter in the vicinity of your erection. <laughs> No one's taking your erection seriously, except for you, when you get home. <laughs> I said, what, if, what if I performed at your local strip club, and you've been there for like the whole weekend, you've been having a mad, you've really made a holiday out of it, and you, you go into work on Monday, and you're at the, uh, the meeting room, the, um, the, uh, the water cool, I don't know, I've never worked. <laughs> Imagine putting this in front of a desk. <laughs> You're like, oh no, why is it full of semen? <laughs> yeah, but what if you're in the water cooler thing and you say, uh, hey Barry, what did you do on a weekend? And you're like, oh, not much, went mountain biking. What did you do? And you go, oh, I went to the strippers all weekend. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Like, no. It was different this time. There was a nude woman dancing in front of me. I was aroused. I thought, what's gonna send this rocket into the stratosphere? Just when I thought the night couldn't get any better, the nude woman walks off, and then in walks a 36-year-old man with scoliosis and a poor man's Napoleon Dynamite haircut. <laughs> and then starts talking about Woolworths. <laughs> Shit, I better pick this gig up. <laughs> it's going down faster than a peregrine falcon. <laughs> the fastest bird in the world. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I put this hay on the stage. I thought, oh, wow, I'm a country man, you know? But yeah, while, ev well, while everyone else is saying goodbye, I'm gonna be vacuuming. Like, <laughs> like when you're at my level, you clean your own props. <laughs> uh, also, I bought a shovel, uh, but I left the tag on so I can take it back. <laughs> Sucked in, Bunnings. Uh, <laughs> You guys must be looking at me right now going, oh, bloody hell, isn't this bloke a weapon? <laughs> and you're right, I am a weapon because lately I've been taking classes in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've taken four classes, four. So if I was coming back from the gig tonight and then some dude jumped out with a knife and he said, hey, Nick, well, you wouldn't know my name. Um, <laughs> If he did, I'd be like, oh, here's a wallet. Um, good background research. <laughs> I'm a hard man to follow. <laughs> Sometimes I walk really fast. But if he... Uh... <laughs> 
if he pulled out the knife and said, uh, hey, mate, um, g- give me a wallet, I'd be like, <laughs> you idiot. Can't you see my weapon? I've taken four classes in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Four classes. He goes, all right, mate, it's on. And then if he walked towards me and then put his feet uh, exactly like this, <laughs> leaned his head forward, <laughs> relaxed his whole body, <laughs> and then someone put a gym mat underneath, <laughs> I would destroy him. <laughs> Absolutely destroy him. It must be working out, because uh, my girlfriend said this to me the other day. She said, Nick, I feel protected around you. And I said, huh, is, is that because I've been doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Four classes. And she said, no, it's because you look like a weirdo. <laughs> I'm like, how does that protect you? <laughs> and she said, well, other weirdos see you walking with me and they think, ah, oh, leave her alone. <laughs> One of us has got to her already. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really working out for me. <laughs> Actually, before we start tonight, uh, <laughs> oh, we're pretty much into it, aren't we? <laughs> Does anyone want to heckle? Any hecklers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you wearing a Canadian tuxedo? Why am I wearing a Canadian tuxedo? Why are you an idiot? (laughs) (laughs) Told you I was a weapon. Uh, To be honest, I didn't even know I was wearing one. Uh, (laughs) If you heckle tonight, bloody hell, I will destroy you. I, I will absolutely destroy you. I'm a weapon. The other night, I was killing this gig, like, as you can see from so far, blowing the roof off. It was going crazy. Girls are lifting up their shoes, like their uh, shoes. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Ooh, high heels. Someone's getting lucky. Girls were lifting up their shirts. Uh, blokes were asking for autographs. Jerry Seinfeld was giving me head. I was like, <laughs> I was like whoa, Jerry. <laughs> Not mid-set. Uh, anyway, I was destroying this gig, absolutely blowing the roof off. And then this idiot, oh, and I should tell you that I was wearing a John Deere shirt, okay? Because John Deere is my favorite brand of tractor. If you haven't got a favorite brand of tractor, get on board. Like, it's how I tell if you're inbred or not. <laughs> Massey Ferguson owners, am I right? <laughs> I was killing this gig, and uh, th- this bloke decides he wants to heckle, and he goes, uh, excuse me, sir, I'd like to heckle. <laughs> and I'm like, step into the flames, idiot. <laughs> I've been doing this for 10 years, believe it or not. Uh, I said, watch your heckle. And this was his heckle, right? He said, John Deere is a shit brand of tractor. Whoa. Right. He said, what a better brand of tractor is, is the Steiger Row Track. Oh. And I'm like, you idiot. <laughs> As we all know, Steiger Row Track uses tracks, okay? That's more compaction on the soil, especially when you're row cropping, okay? <laughs> When you have more compaction on the soil, nothing grows there, and the water flows down the wheel tracks a lot faster, and the soil doesn't absorb the water. John Deere uses tyres. That's less compaction on the soil, and it creates a better, better wheel track, and the water flows less, and it doesn't destroy your hills. So therefore, you have better yields. It was at this point... Sorry? You truly are agricultural. Uh, Yes. Uh, I don't know what to say to that heckle. (laughs) That's like saying, you're funny. And I'm like, I know. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's good. Uh, (laughs) That's like some guy who... Did you rock up thinking this wasn't going to be agriculture? And you're like, 
Hey, it's, uh, yeah. it was a lion. <laughs> Usually it's a gimmick. Uh, it was, at this point, he knew he'd been defeated. Okay, so then he tries to come back at me with another heckle. He says, yeah, but the John Deere doesn't even have a handbrake. And I said, exactly. It's got power shift. Okay, if you want to put it in the park, you just put it in with your thumb. As we all know, there's nothing worse than when you're spraying or when you're ploughing and you keep getting block plow discs or block spray nozzles and you've got a handbrake in the tractor and you've got to keep pulling it off and on to get in and out of the cab. <laughs> so then he tries to come back at me again. <laughs> But this time he's trying to be my friend, you know, because you know when you've been destroyed by a comedian slash male model. And, <laughs> and this was his, his heckle, he goes, well, if the John Deere doesn't have a handbrake, how are you going to do a handbrake turn? And I said, mate, <laughs> the top speed of a tractor is 38 kilometres an hour. Good luck doing a handbrake turn at that speed. <laughs> So if you want to heckle tonight, it's your funeral. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, was, that was good. Uh, <laughs> shit, I better pick this gig up. <laughs> it's going down faster than a Louisiana snapping turtle. <laughs> the fastest turtle in the world. <laughs> At this point in the show, you must be thinking, wow, I wonder what this guy knows about politics. And, <laughs> and look, guys, I don't want to bring the show down. I don't want to bring the mood down, OK? Like, uh, I, don't, I don't want to get too political. You guys came here for a good time. You know? But I've got to say, I am pretty scared of our current political situation. I, I'm scared that there's going to be another war and they're going to bring back conscription, like mandatory service. Are any of you guys scared of that? Are you scared of that, man? Yeah, I'd be scared if I was you. Uh, you're a pretty fit guy. If I was a colonel, I would draft you straight away. <laughs> like, think of me, I'm ripped. <laughs> I would go straight into special forces. <laughs> and I'd probably be driving a tank due to my agricultural background. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, he knows his way around a tractor, throw him in a panzer. <laughs> I don't know why I say panzer that way. <laughs> Old German tank. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of conscription. Like the other day, I was having a 69er. <laughs> and I was thinking about conscription because I was bored. Okay. <laughs> Because as we can all agree, 69ers, pretty overrated. Uh, you're half concentrating on your stuff, and then you're half concentrating on their stuff. Who's ever been in a 69er and gone, oh yeah, what a win-win situation? <laughs> no one, okay? And there's no reason to do them at the same time. Uh, you go, oh yeah, it looks good on paper, cool. It's like riding your favourite roller coaster while eating your favourite ice cream. Uh, <laughs> But when you're actually doing that, you're like, this is actually quite confusing. Like, <laughs> stuff going all over my face. <laughs> Just came here for a good time. <laughs> like, there's no reason to do that. Look, who's been getting head and gone, oh yeah, I tell you what to make this better, giving back. <laughs> no one. It's not a time for charity. <laughs> It's your time to think about stuff. <laughs> and all the other positions make sense. You know, the, the missionary one's good, it's an old classic. You can look in their eyes, pretend they're not going to get old. Uh, <laughs> or not old already. <laughs> uh, the doggy style one's good. If you're a fan of astronomy, you can do that outside, look at the stars. They've all got their uses. Uh, <laughs> 
I mean, the other day I was having this 69er because uh, I have them all the time. Uh, it's the only reason I do stand up is to give me a break from all the 69ers coming my way. Uh, and I thought, what a useless position it is. But then I thought, if I was conscripted into the war and let's say I was on the battlefield and one of my comrades had his legs blown off. <laughs> and I therefore had to escort him from the battlefield without hurting his leg wounds. <laughs> then I reckon the best way <laughs> to carry him off would be to turn him upside down, <laughs> put my penis in his mouth, and, <laughs> put his penis in my mouth, <laughs> and I'd have to suck really hard <laughs> so he doesn't fall off. <laughs> And then you got two hands free for shooting. <laughs> you could be running through the battlefield just going <laughs> Well, you wouldn't be doing that, you'd be going, uh... <laughs> You'd be one of those skill tester clowns of death. <laughs> Right, mate, uh, are you afraid of conscription now? <laughs> mate, guys, sorry to get political. Uh, yeah, as you can tell from my great uh, things here, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from the country. Uh, I'm a country man. I'm from a town called Gundawindi. Anyone been there? No? Ah, you're missing out. Uh, a lot of people... They rag on towns like Gundawindi, saying they're backwards, inbred holes. But Gundawindi, sometimes a town like that can be the forefront of technology. For example, <laughs> they have a disused red rooster there. And rather than knocking the building down, they have turned it into a drive through tobacconist. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that wasn't true. Uh, <laughs> which is good for me, because I've always wanted to get cancer, uh, but the thing that's annoyed me the most is getting in and out of my car. So <laughs> I'm going to move there. Also, Gundawindi got one of Australia's biggest roundabouts. It's great for me, uh, because it gives you time to think about whether you want to go into Gundawindi or not. You can just be like, uh, through a tobacconist, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit of a bloody animal, guys. I love to bloody party. I'm a real party animal. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm all over the place. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, last year, I went on a round-the-world trip uh, with my parents <laughs> and my grandma because I'm an animal. I just thought, hey, who are the three maddest pricks I know? <laughs> to do Kentucky all over again. <laughs> when you go on a round the world trip with one of the people that gave birth to you and one of the people that gave birth to one of them, that's what's known as a babushka doll of adventure. <laughs> we went on this boat trip from Amsterdam to Budapest. I don't know whether you guys have been on this boat trip, but when I went to go, they said, you're not getting on this boat, are you? I said, yeah. I got a ticket and they're like, oh, you don't want to because you'll be the youngest person on this boat by about 40. Did someone bring a baby? <laughs> someone bought a baby. <laughs> Didn't know this was going to be a liability. <laughs> oh, no. Is it okay? 
I can give you time to take it outside if you want. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Why doesn't everyone bring their fucking babies here? <laughs> Shut up, all right? No, but, no, but oh, no, what I meant is you think it's... So it's going to be okay? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I'll, I'll leave the baby in there. <laughs> if anyone can bring more babies, that'd be great. <laughs> Now that I'm anti-baby, uh, <laughs> when I release this, they're going to go, oh, everything was pretty uh, you know, on board, the 69er thing was cool. Uh, <laughs> then he started hating on babies. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm burning this after we record it. Uh, <laughs> when I went to get on the boat, I, I, they, they said, they said you're going to be the youngest person on this boat by about 40 years. And I said, that's cool. I know old people. I've seen Jurassic Park. Um, <laughs> but when I got on the boat and I saw everyone else getting on the boat, I thought, holy shit, these people are old. Like, people were getting wheeled onto the boat. People were hobbling onto the boat. I'm pretty sure I saw a cool room with a bloke's head in it <laughs> on this boat. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, these people are old. I'm going to be the sole survivor of a boat that never sank. <laughs> I'm going to get on the boat, and, and when I get to, like, to Budapest, they'll be like, how did you survive the ba great boat disaster of 2018? I'm like, oh, I'm the only one aboard. Who doesn't know what a gramophone is? Uh, <laughs> and I do know what a gramophone is. They do a great job on your hair. <laughs> uh, what else am I gonna, what are, what is, oh, sh I better check my notes. Sorry, guys. It's quite unprofessional of me. Oh, no. There's no notes in at all. There's photos of Ferrer Rochers. <laughs> Look at this, this one's a family pack. <laughs> That's what's happened when you have Prince Charles over. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's a Ferrer Rocher in the nude. <laughs> That doesn't get your motor running. I don't know what will. <laughs> uh, you guys must be thinking, wow, uh, this is the best comedian I've ever seen. There's no way he has a day job. Uh, but sometimes I work in a cafe uh, and I think to myself, man, thank God I got comedy at the end of this shit job. I think I got comedy. And right now, I'm standing in front of you guys and I just spent $3,000 on filming this thing and you guys are pretty confused as to what's going on. <laughs> I just did a shit joke about Ferrero Rochers. <laughs> right now I'm thinking, whoa, thank God I got a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine doing this every night. <laughs> I'd kill myself. <laughs> no, I would. Uh, <laughs> I am from the country, as I said before, I'm from Gundawindi, and uh, it's nice, I've been living in Melbourne, here in the city, for about uh, five years, I love it, I love coming to the city, but I think when you live in the city for so long, your priorities change, like, we get whatever we want here, 24-7, uh, for example, uh, I used to work in a cafe, as I said before, because everyone's got a passion, and mine's retail. Um, <laughs> you get a bit of perspective into people's priorities in the city when you work at a cafe. Anyone here work at a cafe? No? Oh, oh we've got a room full of ballers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dance for us, little monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and I drive home in my Lexo, whatever you call it. <laughs> I only call it Alexo from Ice Cube songs. Uh, uh, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> when, you, when you work in a cafe, 
you get a glimpse like how great are customers ah oh, <laughs> they are the best people in the world like, how, how great are these customers at cafes when they go uh excuse me can i get half of the shot of the coffee in the bottom and then can i get some cold milk and then can i get the rest of the shot and then can i get some hot milk on top of that and I'm like, how fucked is your life that you care this much about coffee? <laughs> Buy a puzzle. Um, <laughs> I'm so proud of my parents. I'm so proud of my parents because they live an hour from the nearest cafe. So they've got different priorities. Like whenever I take them to a cafe, I say, what type of coffee would you like? And they say, just coffee. Just coffee. I'm so proud of them. Like, I could give them anything. I could give them mud. <laughs> and they're like, ooh, the city. <laughs> Do you know why they think of that stuff? Do you know why coffee isn't on the top of their priority list? Because they've got other shit to think about. Like, my dad, he's built a dam wherever we've lived. Four different houses, four different dams. One didn't even get water in it. <laughs> It was just being optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever someone orders a weird coffee, I'm like, ah, oh, this person's never built a dam. <laughs> Here's a shovel, start digging. Preferably fill it up while you're still in it. Uh, <laughs> maybe with some cold water, then some hot water, then some cold water, then some hot water, until you drown. Uh, also, I learnt this from working in a cafe. If you're one of those people that likes to order soy milk, that's fine with me. I drink soy milk, I think it's great. But if you're one of those people that likes to order a soy milkshake but still wants full fat ice cream in the soy milkshake, you're a fucking monster. <laughs> You're the reason they should bring back the chair. <laughs> I'll flick the switch. <laughs> I will. <laughs> You're the same person who brings babies into live tapings. Uh, <laughs> just joking, just joking. Oh no, they're gone. <laughs> I loved you, baby. <laughs> My comedy son. Or, or daughter, sorry, I don't know. Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's how I know my parents aren't into kinky sex. <laughs> Come with me on this one. Uh, Cause do you reckon kinks and fetishes started in first world countries? Like, Cause in first world countries, like the city, we have all types of options, we have whatever we want 24 seven. So our priorities are a bit different. Like probably all of you guys work 45 hours a week behind a desk or in a construction site. So therefore you can buy whatever you want. Probably all of you rent a decent place, probably own a nice place. Probably all of you have a decent car. Probably all of you, all of you have a big screen TV. So you go, okay, I've got all this stuff. I've got no worries, so the only way I'm going to orgasm now is if someone dresses in a squirrel suit and <laughs> sticks their fist up my ass. <laughs> and that's cool, that's fine if you're into that. Like, I'm, I'm crazy too. Like, sometimes I eat the wrong side of the Maxibon first. <laughs> I'm a wild man. <laughs> But if, if you're in a third world country and you've been working hard all day, you don't know whether you're going to eat or not, you don't know what you're going to come home to, and then when you come home and your partner says, hey, how do you want to have sex tonight? You'd be like, oh, just missionary, thanks. I've got a lot on. Uh, I've got to build a dam in the morning, okay? <laughs> That's how, my, that's how I know my parents don't do that stuff. And look, I would be fine if they did. I, I used to do a bit of kinky sex myself. Uh, I, I did a bit of bondage. 
I had a safe word actually, and that was, um, please don't put anything in the eye of my dick. <laughs> work sometimes and <laughs> when it didn't work I knew where my keys were <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you guys like that one uh, I tell you who didn't like it a civil engineers conference in Fremantle <laughs> I was chased out of Fremantle with set squares. <laughs> I, was, I, I tried to recover the gig, give him some shit. I was like, what? You guys can build a bridge, plan a town, the account, handle a few keys in the dick. <laughs> Man up! <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, the gig did not get any better. Yeah, but uh, I, was, I was talking to a friend the other day about fetishes and things like that, and he said, um, hey, Nick, have you heard about this disgusting fetish called scat sex? And I said, oh, I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is, but it sounds cool. Like, I'm, I'm liberal, you know, lay it on me bra. You know, and, and then he said, oh, this isn't a Maxi Bond thing. Uh, <laughs> this is a little wilder than that. And I said... What, what is it? What is it? I'm cool, like I'm free, I'm crazy. And he said, uh, it's when two people are having sex and they, they like defecate on each other. They like poo uh, on each other. And I said, oh, I'm not into that. Uh, <laughs> and he said, yeah, Nick, isn't it terrible? Isn't it disgusting? What a bad thing those couples do. And I said, hang on. You and I might think it's disgusting, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. That's just something that people do. And as we can all agree, couples are into worse things. I, I used to work at JB Hi-Fi, because <laughs> everyone's got a passion, and <laughs> mine's retail. Uh, <laughs> and this is a true story. Once I saw a couple walk into JB Hi-Fi, and they went straight to the Top Gear section. Now, for those who don't know, Top Gear is a very popular TV show about cars. And the lady went over to the Top Gear section and she pulled a Top Gear mug off the shelf. And she said to her husband, didn't you mention that you needed a new mug for work? <laughs> and you like Top Gear. And then he said, yeah, I did at one stage mention <laughs> that I needed a new mug for work. And I do like Top Gear. <laughs> this will be a suitable mug <laughs> for me to take to work every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> For him to be boring enough <laughs> to say that <laughs> and for her to be boring enough to remember that he once said that, <laughs> wouldn't you just rather shit on each other? <laughs> if you're remembering stuff that bland, you are dead already. <laughs> Like, if I ever had a daughter, God forbid, and she, uh, she said, Hey, Dad, this is my new partner. Um, we've got a story for you. Uh, he mentioned he needed a new mug for work. <laughs> and he likes Top Gear. I'd be like, stop it there. Here's a shovel. Go build a dam. <laughs> Fill it up with you both in it. Uh, <laughs> but if she said, um, <laughs> Hey, Dad, um, 
I don't know why I'm telling you this. Uh, <laughs> but in order to orgasm, we like to shit on each other. And I'd say, oh, good icebreaker. Uh, <laughs> at least it's different. At least it's unique. It could be worse. You could put full fat ice cream into soy milkshakes. <laughs> or do 69ers. Uh, I reckon it... I reckon if your kid told you that they were into scat sex, it'd be kind of like if your kid told you they'd just taken up the accordion. <laughs> you have my full support, just don't do it around me. <laughs> <laughs> it is disgusting. <laughs> my dad uh, used to give me good old country advice, you know, like good old outback advice about things. Uh, he always said this saying when it comes to meeting a partner. He said, Nick, when you want to meet a girl, remember this. Long wife, long life. <laughs> and I always adhered to his advice. And uh, like a long time later, on my wedding day, my dad called me over. He said, hey, Nick, before we do the wedding, there's something I've got to tell you. I love you. I'm so proud of you. I love this girl you're going to marry. And I'm just so happy I raised a good bloke. But there's something I've got to tell you. <laughs> it's actually not long wife, long life. <laughs> It's actually happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck, Dad! <laughs> you should have told me earlier. <laughs> I'm about to marry the longest woman in the world. <laughs> this woman was so long <laughs> that when she wore roller skates, people thought she was a train. <laughs> We'd be, uh, we'd be roller skating down at St Kildon and we'd be trying to buy tickets to go on the country link to Albury. <laughs> she was longer than the wingspan of a wandering albatross. <laughs> the longest bird in the world. <laughs> How long is a piece of string? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> It's not as long as my wife. <laughs> she was longer than the Home and Away DVD box set. <laughs> and that was with the commentary by Alf. <laughs> hey, there's people walking to a cafe. <laughs> I don't know, I never watch it. Uh, anyway, I had to divorce her. Uh, she was too long. Uh, but she's doing quite well for herself now. She's been commissioned as a bridge. So, good luck, Wendy Dashhound. <laughs> I'll always love you. <laughs> I went to England recently. Loved England. Love it. Okay. I, I, I bloody loved it. Uh, going to England, I was so excited. I thought, wow. Like, going to England, going to the capital, London. Like, London. So much history. So much culture. I wonder what I'll learn in London. I wonder how London will change me. I wonder what kind of man I'll come back as once I come back from London. <laughs> and upon leaving London, I thought, wow, how great is cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see the sights. <laughs> I was like, screw London Bridge and Buckingham Temple. Uh, <laughs> I just want to have a conversation with a complete stranger in a nightclub toilet cubicle <laughs> at 800 words per minute. Like, I don't know who you are, brah, but let's do Bitcoin. <laughs> it's cool travelling, 
um, and it's cool, like like having a partner and stuff. You know, it's great. Uh, it's better than you know, like being you know single. Uh, well, me being single anyway, I'm not good at it. Uh, when I'm when I'm single, I just do weird stuff. Uh, one time, I bought a flashlight. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know what a flashlight is, it's a torch with a fake vagina uh, in the front of it. Um, so it's the only object that accurately symbolises the cross section between loneliness and camping. <laughs> I went to uh, a... <laughs> I, think, I, I, think, I think a flashlight is kind of like a fondue set. Uh, you think it's going to be a great idea, and then you have one good time with it, put it in the cupboard, but then every time you open the cupboard from then on, it just gets more and more embarrassing. <laughs> Until you go to throw it out, and then you think of the good time you had with it, and then you have sex with it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to borrow my fondue set. <laughs> one skewer only, thanks. <laughs> Imagine buying a fondue set alone and then the guy going, got a party coming up, huh? And you're like, no. Nah. <laughs> you would call the terrorist hotline straight away. <laughs> Shit, I better pick this gig up. <laughs> It's going down faster than a... I've got no more of those. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Just before I end this, I'm going to have a quick look over the notes. Oh, no. Ah, oh, These aren't my notes. Can you, come, can you come up here, man? Just for a second. No. These aren't my notes at all. It's just a drawing of my wife. <laughs> Good luck, Wendy Dashhound. <laughs> I'll always love you. <laughs> Uh, I tried to draw it on the back, and uh, yeah, my friend said, what is that? <laughs> I was like, it's a long wife, and they said, that is an elongated wife. Um, all right, you can sit down now. <laughs> Give it up for this guy. Uh, I don't know whether you've got to sign some kind of form or something, but uh, just don't sue me. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll end on this. Uh, I, lo I love travelling, I, I do, uh, but travelling around England, places like that, don't really compare to the country. Like, to the Australian outback, where I'm from, I love it. I love the people, it, and the people you meet out there are the best. And the country can even change your perspective on things. Like, because people in the country sometimes have different perspective than the people in the city. Uh, like, I was in Perth recently. Now, I know what you're thinking. Nick, Perth, not the country. Yeah. But I was crabbing in Perth. I was catching crabs out of the water in Perth. You can't do that in a city. Uh, you can't do that. You can't go crabbing in Melbourne or Sydney. Well, not on purpose anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Had a few hard nights fishing, I tell you that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and before I tell you this story, I've got to say, the bloke I was crabbing with, heart of gold, great guy, his name was Tone, love him, love him to death. The, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, and just a great old friend. But I've got to say, when you are crabbing with a man that is over 50 from Perth, you're pretty much guaranteed, at one point or another, he's going to say something fucked. <laughs> Like, that is a Venn diagram of One Nation. <laughs> I was crabbing with Tone, and uh, it had been four hours, and he still had not said anything remotely bigoted, sexist, or racist. And I was like, whoa, this is a record. 
I sent an email to the Guinness Book of Records. I said, I am crabbing with a man over 50 from Perth, still hasn't said anything fucked yet. And they replied back straight away. They said, this is the craziest shit we've ever heard of. And we once saw a lizard man. <laughs> Try to hold him there, maybe film it on your phone. We're gonna have eight people fly out from Guinness. <laughs> to make sure we can see this great specimen. Anyway, we're having a great time. And I was crabbing with my shirt off. Because if you're rocking a rig like this, you've got to advertise. Yeah? Like, if you've got a Bentley, you don't keep it in the driveway. You keep it out, like, on the road to make everyone <laughs> horny. Uh, yeah. I was, so I was crabbing with Tone, and this crab tried to grab me on the nipples with its nippers. And I said to Tone, I said, Phew, look at this randy bloke trying to grab me on the nipples with its nippers. And then Tone kind of looked at me, like, going, oh, yeah. <laughs> now I can say it. <laughs> He's giving me the key to the door to fucked world. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said this. It's honestly what he said. He said, Nick, do you know the best thing about having sex with another man is? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> Lay it on me tone. <laughs> Always wanted to hear the perspectives on homosexuality from a heterosexual man that is over 50 from Perth who likes to go crabbing. <laughs> Where were you on Q&A? And this is what he said. He said, the best thing about having sex with another man is, is you can reach around, grab his penis, and it feels like yours has gone all the way through. <laughs> I don't know whether that's homophobic or not. <laughs> but we all have to agree, that's art. Uh, <laughs> if you told Salvador Dali that, he'd be like, <laughs> Sacre bleu! <laughs> <laughs> Put some melted clocks over the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> and it changed my perspectives on homosexuality. I've never been attracted to men but no one ever told me that it feels like having a real big dick. Yeah. Uh, if someone told me that, I'd be like, sign me up. <laughs> and not only a big dick, a dick big enough to impale another human being. <laughs> <laughs> like, forget about making love, forget about pleasure, forget about crabbing. I just want to go human spearfishing. <laughs> anyway, I called I call the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I said, it's off. <laughs> I said, yeah, we weren't holding out. <laughs> anyway, I, I must admit though, being there with Tone, in the water, Got me a bit excited. And I started singing it. <laughs> Pork palace, hand me my chalice. Cause shit goes crazy when I get to Pork Palace. Everybody! Pork palace, hand me my chalice. Cause shit goes crazy when I get to Pork Palace. Pork palace, hand me my chalice. Cause shit goes crazy when I get to Pork Palace. Thank you, everybody! Oh.